got to slow down and take it easy. Slow down, you got to slow down and take it easy. Welcome to another edition of Stuggy Review Video Review. And uh, if you're new to this whole uh, Stuggy Review Video Review thing, I am Walt White. And uh, well, I do this every week. It's, uh, uh, we've been at this for well, quite a while now. Uh, videos have been up for well, actually over a year now, but uh, it's not. It's neither here nor there. Um, the review this week is the Flor de Oliva Corojo, and uh, this coincides with the uh, the bargain cigar breakdown that I've been doing. Um, and again, if you're uh, if you're new to this, uh, basically what I'm doing is taking sub three dollar cigars. Uh, accounting shipping into the equation and uh, just reviewing them uh, in order to uh, to find cigars that fit a tight budget for around the holidays. I did that last year, doing it again this year, and uh, so far I've been, I've been pleased. I haven't gotten uh, too many bad cigars. So, uh, it's nice to see that there are uh, you know several cigars out there for a very affordable price, and they're not bad at all. So. A little bit about the cigar. Uh, <clears throat> uh, with a name like Florida Oliva, obviously it's made by the, uh, the Oliva cigar family. These are handmade cigars in Esteli, Nicaragua. They're uh, a Nicaraguan puro, the, the Corojo is, uh, which means that they have a Nicaraguan wrapper, binder, and filler. The ring gauge is 50, the length is 5 inches. This is, one of the, this is the Robusto size. Now, unfortunately, there's not a, a whole lot of information out there on this particular cigar. Um, I first place I went was uh, olivacigar.com, and uh, didn't see them there. Um, they have the Siri line up there, you know, the Siri G, O, Special S, uh, Siri V, and the Master Blends. I didn't see anything on the, the bundle brand, which I suppose isn't totally uncommon. Um, they're not really going to push their their bundle cigar. At least one would think they wouldn't really push their bundle cigar over the others. But uh, some information would be nice. Um, I, uh, I next I headed over to uh, the various retailers and gathered very little information there as well. Um, there is a whole lot of talk about the natural Maduro and gold, but uh, very little about the Corolla, unfortunately. Uh, the only thing I have been able to come across is in uh, Rich Perlman's uh, Cigar Cyclopedia, and that uh, these cigars came in existence in 1996. Uh, they're pa pa packaged in bundles of 25, with the exception of the Giants, which are bundled in eight. And uh, the Giants are big, giant cigars, uh, if you're not aware. Um, price breakdown, if I can get everything straight here. I priced these at uh, tinderbox.com. They have uh, bundles of 25 for $39.95. They have a shipping rate of $8.95 flat rate. Uh, I think it's a little high, but uh, anything over $99 is free shipping. So uh, I suppose with smaller orders, you're paying for the, uh, the people that spend over 100 bucks. That brings your subtotal to $48.90. Break that down over 25 cigars, you get $1.96 per single. So uh, you're looking at a sub $2 cigar here. In, uh, that time we, we see how see how it goes. It's got a uh, a mild aroma. Uh, it's got a toothy appearance, which basically means that uh, it's got lots and lots of little speckles of oil, uh, like dried oil, all over it, and uh, that's always nice, a little bumpy. It's got a sort of a like a gritty texture because of that. There are two veins along the back side of the cigar. They both run about half the length of the cigar in opposite directions. And uh, as they get further away from the center of the cigar, uh, they get smaller and smaller and uh, disappear eventually. But uh, those two veins add a little bit of a texture to it. Um, again, the medium-sized veins, there's not a, not a whole lot to them. So they're, you know, I mean, they're, not, they're not really going to be intrusive or anything. The, uh, the feel, when you give it a light pinch, is, is nice and firm. And uh, it's got a little bit of give to it, a little bit of spring. So when you squeeze it just a little bit, you'll feel the cigar 
kind of compress in your fingers and then it'll spring back to shape, which is uh, ideally what you're looking for in a cigar. Or at least that's what I'm looking for in a cigar. I, uh, I quickly cut the, the cap of my cigar while I was talking with uh, my scissors. The pre-light draw is very free and it's got a, it's like a fruity flavor to it. You know, like a, like a dark, deep, you know, like a red fruit. If that makes any sense to you. And uh, that about covers the pre-light. Um, toasting my cigar. We be done in just a second. I'll uh, take a puff, see how we're getting started. And then uh, I'm going to take a quick break. We'll come back to the first third of the cigar. And, uh, you know, we'll get things underway. The, uh, the toasting took a little while because I was holding this, uh, the, uh, the lighter a little bit further away from the cigar than usual. Uh, just trying a little new tech, uh, a different toasting technique. Uh, looks like I got my cigar lit, nice and even. Getting a good draw out of it, lots of smoke. And uh, well, I'm going to enjoy it a little bit. I'll be back in just a sec and uh, we'll get things underway. slow and uh, it stays even and the ash is uh, very light in color it's uh, firm and compacted and uh, one of the one of the uh, the real nice things about uh, this type of cigar that has this compacted ash and light color is uh, when you when you go to knock the ash off it doesn't take a whole lot of force a little tap against the ashtray and uh, drops in you know drops into the bottom and uh, it's it keeps its shape you know I could if I really wanted to, I could reach into the ashtray and pull up the ash and, uh, you know, show it to you. It's uh, nice and firm, it's compacted, solid, and uh, I always look at that as a good sign because uh, that, this is the type of cigar that, that I want to smoke in my car. Um, from time to time I go out and uh, I'll grab a cigar and, and take it along with me. And uh, I don't want a cigar that I'm going to puff along and it's going to be all over the front of me and all over my seat, my dashboard and everything else. This uh, this type of cigar, I know I can hit I can hit a pothole. We got a lot of them in Pennsylvania, and uh, I don't have to worry about the uh, the ash falling into my lap or anything like that. It, uh, it's a nice you know nice solid ash. Uh, it's a good it's a good uh, attribute to a, to a cigar. The uh, as I said, I've, I've been at this for about 30 minutes now. The smoke time's pretty good. The uh, the draw is still pretty free. Uh, it's it's borderline a little too free for me, but uh, but it's not bad. Uh, it puts off lots and lots of smoke. You know, it really just just fills the room. And uh, surprisingly, you know, I've got a a nice thick lingering cloud of smoke up above the camera, and uh, the the room room is really not noticeable. Um, I mean, it, it, it's definitely there. I can smell there's a cigar in the room. But uh, it's not really defined, it's not standing out, and uh, I mean, to me it's just, uh, it's not even a little bit offensive. The, uh, the smoke is, is nice and thick, it's the type that's easy to get through your sinuses and uh, that, you know, that whole, that whole feeling I went to, yeah, it's easy to get through your sinuses, you know, blow smoke rings, big, you know, big thing there. But, uh, but it is, it's, it's nice and thick. The, uh, the finish is... Is uh, it's smooth? It's easy on the palate, but it's got like uh, sharp spiciness right on the tip of your tongue, which I, I think is very interesting. I, I you know I'm really liking that, that aspect of the, the finish. The uh, the body's medium, 
I think I probably said that already, but I'll say it again. The, uh, the body's about medium. And uh, the base flavor is... Uh, the only thing I'm getting at the moment is cedar. Uh, you know, I can taste uh, a cedary flavor. And uh, it's got it's, uh, like a tangy aftertaste. It's kind of strange, but uh, it's, it's just coming off as uh, like a cedar base flavor with uh, a tangy aftertaste. It sounds strange, but uh, I'm liking it so far. So, you know, the, uh, I'm happy with it. Now, before I, uh, I move along, I just want to touch base with everyone about the progress that I'm making. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm, I'm getting the emails taken care of. If I still haven't gotten to you yet, um, I'm on my way. You know, I'm getting there. <laughs> my sincerest apologies to, uh, to the YouTube messages that I got. Uh, a while back, we enabled a, uh, a Spam Assassin plugin for, for our email system. And uh, what happens is that when I get a message in YouTube, it, uh, it automatically forwards it to my email account. <clears throat> and, uh, well, the spam assassin was picking it up and junking it before it ever got to me. So I just assumed that no one was sending me any messages on YouTube. I don't generally log in unless I go to upload a video. And uh, I'm really slacking on that. Everything's been uploaded to Blip TV. But anyway, I log in and I have, you know, I had about seven messages. All dating all the way back to August. And, uh... Some of them that I answered, some of them I didn't uh, for one reason. I know I answered a couple of them, but they were still coming up as new. Um, so I didn't answer those in August. So uh, if you sent me a message in August and I uh, didn't reply, I apologize. Uh, I really do. Uh, resend it and uh, I'll take care of it. I didn't want to go back a couple of months and, uh, and answer questions if I had already done it and I wasn't quite sure whether I did or not. Uh, I did answer a few of them. Uh, some of them were more recent, more like <laughs> September. But uh, again, my apologies. I, I definitely need to, to log in the YouTube a little bit more and, and take care of that. Uh, I'm making a dent in the email, as I had mentioned. I, I've got uh, some of it taken care of. I've got a lot, I've got a whole lot more to go. But uh, you know, things are coming along. Um, YQMA. I'm not. Again, I'm not sure when when it's going to happen again. Uh, but I do have some things going on, uh, some wheels in motion. I'm going to have Chris Darling uh, come on with me again. Uh, if you don't, uh, Chris Darling is CD from Cigar Live, and uh, it was uh, for me it was a very memorable show. I thought it went very very well, and uh, we got some great feedback on that episode. So I want to have uh, Chris come back, and uh, we'll shoot the breeze. I've also got uh, Brian Hewitt lined up to uh, to get working on some video stuff and uh, that's about where I'm at or where we are at with uh, with stogierview.com so you know, without any further ado I'm going to take a quick break I'm going to let you uh, look at a couple of pictures of my Florida Oliva Corojo and uh, I'll be back to get started on the second third second third of my Flor de Oliva Caro, and uh, it's not a whole lot different uh, than the first third was. The uh, the ash remains very light in color, it's firm, compacted, the uh, the burn's nice and even, the burn line, it's about medium, it's not real thin, but it's not real thick either. The, uh, the burn rate is slow, I'm still getting uh, a good large volume of smoke on every puff, the, uh, the draw is free. Uh, it's not, I don't know, it's still borderline. Uh, it really hasn't changed much. Uh, if it were any looser, I think it would bother me. Um, it, uh, it, uh, the draw is free, but it doesn't seem to be heating the cigar, and that's my concern. Uh, when the draw seems to be too free, uh, it just has a tendency, at least for me, to, to almost stoke you know, the, the foot of the cigar. And uh, it just kind of heats things up, but I'm not getting that with this particular cigar. So all is well in uh, 
in that sense. The uh, the body's still me medium. It's uh, it's building slightly, um, but again, it's still medium. I'm trying to get the band off without slipping slipping it under the wrapper leaf. There's a tiny little piece that keeps it slipping on top of it. But uh, the uh, uh, just tear it off. The uh, uh, I just totally lost train of thought. I should have never started that that uh, that band. See what happens when uh, when you do this kind of off the cuff. <laughs> you totally lose track of what you're doing. The uh, the, the body is medium. Uh, the finish is starting a little dry. It's uh, it's still very easy on the palate, but uh, it's sharp on the tip of my tongue, which I find very interesting. Uh, I really like that. The uh, the base flavor is is still cedar, but it's that tanginess that I was getting before has subsided. Uh, there's a little bit of a peppery flavor coming into the picture, but the part that I like the most is just this natural Corojo flavor that, that really is starting to outshine the cedar. And uh, the further I get into the cigar, the, the richer and deeper this flavor gets. And uh, I just find it nice and complex, uh, especially for a cigar that's this inexpensive. I, uh, I'm just really liking this natural Corojo flavor. It's uh, it's what I like about Corojo cigars, uh, most of all, and uh, that's probably why I like the Don Juan Garcia uh, Black Labels as much as I do. They really are, they just have a, a full, full flavored Corojo taste that uh, that I really like. And uh, this cigar is uh, is pretty much the same way. You know that this this tobacco flavor is coming out, and uh, I'm just really enjoying it. As far as the construction of the cigar goes, uh, I haven't had a single complaint yet. That there was a situ, there was one spot where uh, the burn was a little uneven, but that was uh, user error. I wasn't puffing on it enough. Uh, I started to go out. I picked it up, took a couple quick puffs, and before I knew it, I had one side burning a little faster than the other, and uh, it required a quick touch up. But uh, after that, it's uh, it's burning great. I don't expect to need to touch it up again unless, of course, I uh, neglect it again. But uh, so far, it's doing very well. Um, let's uh, move away from the cigar a little bit. I'm trying to run in some things through my mind. I'm not sure what I want to talk about. The uh, I'll give you a little a small site update. Uh, I mentioned that we're going to have uh, Chris Darling on the uh, future episode of YQMA. I've also uh, I'm working with Brian Hewitt, as I had mentioned. Um, I'm also in the process of, uh, of getting a fellow by the name of Ed to do a, uh, a video review and if everything goes well, um, you know, on the equipment end, if, uh, if everything goes smoothly, there isn't any hiccups and uh, he doesn't mind, I'm, uh, I'm going to have him uh, come on an episode of YQMA in the future as well. Uh, that's something to look forward to. Uh, I'm not sure when, uh, probably a couple of weeks we'll get that video review up. Uh, this gentleman owns a cigar shop in uh, St. Petersburg, I believe, down in Florida. And uh, I know very little about him. I just know that uh, this is something he'd be interested in trying. So uh, we're going to give it a go. Uh, a friend of his, uh, I believe his name is Tom. My apologies if uh, I, I had the incorrect name. I'm not looking at the email. But uh, he contacted me, and, uh, and we got to talking a little bit. And uh, So we're going to go from there. So we'll see just how it goes. So we've got a couple of new faces coming on uh, in the next couple of weeks, maybe a month and a half or so, and uh, you know, we're still chugging along, getting, uh, just doing everything we can to keep uh, keep afloat. So uh, with that in mind, I'm going to take a quick break, I'll uh, show you some more pictures of my Flor de Lima Corojo, and uh, I'll be back, we'll do the final third, wrap it up, and uh, let you be in the way. So I'll see you next time. Uh, been two hours now. I'm uh, closing in on nub of my uh, my Flor de Oliva Corojo, and uh, so far I've been very happy with it. Um, I think it may have plateaued a little bit. 
um, it's been very consistent. Um, pretty much since I took uh, the band off, you know, late, very late in the second, third. But uh, it, it's still enjoyable nonetheless. The uh, the body is in the medium range, uh, still. It's uh, it's slowly, slowly getting heavier. But uh, what? I mean, it, it's tough to say. It's slowly getting heavier, but there's not a whole lot of progression. I'm really not noticing it too much, which is why I'm saying you know it's plateauing. There's not a whole lot of change here. You know, it's not getting, it's not picking up any steam. It's not getting getting any more depth, as, as I guess what I'm trying to say. The um, the finish is uh, is pretty much the same as it was. It's fairly easy on the palate. It's uh, still s sharp on the tip of my tongue, and uh, the dryness is still there. It, it comes and goes a little bit. You know, it's a little drier sometimes than others, but uh, but it's not bad. Um, it's bearable. I, I I have a tendency to dislike dry cigars, but uh, this one's not not really irritating me too much. Uh, I do get a little bit of dryness in the back of my throat, but uh, it's well within reason. Uh, sip of water clears it right up. The uh, the base flavor has gone from that cedar flavor that I was into earlier on in the cigar, and it's moved uh, completely to a corojo flavor, which uh, which I really like. Now there are still some flavors of black pe black pepper. That tanginess is completely gone, and uh, uh, I'm getting a little bit more of a spicy flavor, especially when I blow it through my sinuses. The, uh, as far as the complexity goes, I'm uh, I'm a little surprised. I mean, I uh, I was not expecting that from this cigar. I thought this was going to be more along the lines of the natural and the Maduro, where you've got a straightforward cigar and it doesn't really vary too much, or you know, it doesn't have a whole lot of character. And uh, that was one of the interesting things that uh, I talked to uh, one of the Oliva reps about was. Uh, we got in there talking about the Florida Little Bundle brands, and uh, he went on to tell me that the Corojo is not a big seller, and the reason being that he thinks that it's a little too complex for, for you know the average guy that are coming in to pick up these cigars from the cigar shop, uh, and their purpose is to you know pick them up and go fishing, you know they're uh, they're not as straightforward and easy to enjoy as as a natural and a Maduro, so. So you know you have to dig around a little bit more to, to really get your enjoyment out of a, a, out of a Corojo, and uh, he believes that this is why they don't sell as well as a natural Maduro. He said they go through an incredible amount of, uh, of bundles of the natural and the Maduro, but uh, not nearly as many as the Corojo. Personally, I really like the Corojo. I would definitely buy these again in the future, and I plan on buying them again in the future. They're, uh, they're available at my local cigar shop, and I think I'll make it a point to stop in and pick up one or two tomorrow, and uh, have one right there on the spot. The, uh, the price point is pretty good, too. I mean, uh, $1.96, it's, it's tough to beat uh, a cigar that's got some complexity, some depth, uh, for under $2. I mean, it's, uh, I don't know, I really enjoy it. So obviously it goes without saying that uh, I recommend this cigar, especially if you like uh, nice Corojo flavors. Uh, I think you're going to get a lot out of this cigar, and it's well worth the price. And uh, that about does it for the review of the Flor de Oliva Corojo. Um, I'm kind of running out of things to say. I'm not quite sure what to uh, to tell you. You know, I, I don't know what to tell you is coming up in the future because uh, I'm really not 100 percent sure. Yet. I'm uh, I'm juggling around. Uh, three or four possible cigars for next week. Uh, I know there's uh, there, there's one in particular that I want to do, but I'm holding off until uh, a site gets revamped. So uh, so I'm not doing it until after the, the retailer's website gets uh, gets an overhaul. And uh, once that's done, I'm going to review that cigar. Uh, I don't know how long I'm going to be doing these uh, bargain cigar reviews or how close to Christmas I'm going to get. Um, I may run right up till Christmas, maybe the first week after Christmas, uh, because I'm going to record in advance. But uh, you know, expect the first full-blown review after Christmas to be something different. It might even be something extravagant, uh, because I'll probably smoke it right around Christmas time, and uh, I'll record and post that, you know, in advance. So, uh, so that's what I've got planned. Uh, again, it's all. Nothing is rock solid. Everything's kind of up in the air whether or not, you know, what direction I'm going to go. But 
we'll, uh, we'll definitely see where it goes, and uh, I'll try to post a comment in there and let you know what's coming in, coming up, so that uh, if you have the opportunity to pick up one of these cigars locally, you can uh, you can do so and join me. But uh, anyway, thanks for uh, thanks for everyone's support. Really appreciate it. Keep the emails coming. Um, I, I, I get the question pool is a little thin for uh, for YQMA, but uh, but keep them coming. I'm, uh, you know, I want a big, nice pool, pool to pull from. Uh, right now, we've got just I'm overwhelmed with with uh, a lot of uh, nice nice emails and comments. Not a whole lot of questions. Uh, I'm getting together everything I can. We probably have enough to do one or two YQMA episodes, but I like to have plenty to gather from and, and kind of flow from what the next. So. If there's anything in the back of your mind that you want to ask, feel free to just drop it, drop an email. Either use the contact form, email me directly, and uh, we'll get it on the show. So, anyway, uh, until next time, happy smoking.